phone started jumping, what a day Swear to God I need it, now I can't afford to wait I just had a fan hit me up from Kuwait Told him this would happen, now we not a minute late Seen him down bad, now they tryna hate Same one shot to hit me for the raise Got a mail, now they coming with a place Check the numbers, fam, I swear I'm getting paid I'm a Don, just like the Perrier It's one time when I'm looking at a face Got a check and I bought myself a place They get some money and they blow it on bait I don't flex but I'm pushing all the weight Told them all I swear I got it's what it takes Phone started jumping what a day Swear to God I need it now I can't afford to wait I just had a fan hit me up from Kuwait Told them this would happen now we not a We're here at Research Stadium in Corvallis, Oregon for the first edition of the Pack 2 Championship between the Washington State Cougars and the Oregon State Beavers. Oregon State is currently 4-6. and six. They're just looking to get into a bowl. They have to win against us today and then against Boise next week. Washington State is looking to bounce back from a loss to New Mexico last week. They are currently 8-2 and two in the season. The keys for the game are going to be Washington State University's rushing defense. Last week against New Mexico, they gave up 360 yards to Eli Sanders and, and, and Devin Damper. The Beavers' offense is one-dimensional. They really just have a rushing attack. They don't have a passing game at all. At least they didn't before this game. Four come, go Branson down the post. There's Jermaine Terry. Walker, no. Back to the end zone, yes. They've cycled through three different quarterbacks this year. Through 10 games, they have a total of just four passing touchdowns and nine interceptions. On the ground for the Beavers, it's going to be Anthony Hankerson. He's averaging about four and a half per carry. And as we know, the Cougs have done not so well on the road. And while the Beavers quarterbacks have totaled the year for four touchdowns, John Matier the last two weeks has had four passing touchdowns. Kyle Williams has had three receiving touchdowns in the past two weeks. He is currently at 11, which is second in the nation. He's looking to catch up to Gabe Marks's WCU school record with 15 touchdowns in a single season. So we'll see if WCU can stop Oregon State's rushing attack. And if the Cougs can put up the yards, they're currently averaging 400. 61 yards per game, which is like ninth in the country. And a big shout out to CougFan.com. If you're not already subscribed, go check out CougFan.com. They have tons of great info about all of the upcoming matchups for every sport, all the things WSU. You can also download the CBS app to see Dylan and myself on a weekly basis recapping the Cube games. We're also going to be talking basketball throughout the season. So again, a big thank you to CougFan.com. Make sure to check them out and go Cougs. And as always, if you or somebody you know is thinking of buying, selling, or refinancing a property in the Pacific Northwest, make sure to reach out to myself, Connor Webb, the Couch GM, as I'm a full-time mortgage broker during the day, and it's my goal to help as many sports fans get into the home of their dreams. If you'd like to reach out and connect, I'll have a link in the description of this video, and I'll talk to you soon. This is our second time in Corvallis and it is a beautiful little city. It was a crisp fall day, about 45 degrees. And we parked about a half mile east of Reeser Stadium. We spotted an Oregon State tailgate and I had to ask an alumni about its thoughts on the Pac-12. So talking about the dissolution of the Pac-12 and today's the first Pac-2 championship technically, right? So what are your thoughts on the Pac-12 falling apart first off? Well, of course I'm upset and uh, not much I can do about it, but upset about it. I'm it's been, what, a year now, basically. You guys have fared better than we have. It's been a tough year because, you know, everything kind of got jerked out from under us. It's tough because I don't know about everybody else. I pay for season tickets. I, I give to the S scholarship fund. And now that I'm sure I'm going to get a letter to start giving for NIL, too. And I don't know if that's my responsibility in a way. So I have a long list of people I blame, I guess. Yeah. TV, all the presidents. Yeah, ADs. I mean, they slow dissolution of the league and it's really sad you know and to, to go from where we were to such a subpar league so quickly don't know what to think about it yeah what do you think about the the pac-12 building back up with some of the schools that they've added to the to the conference now i'm optimistic i hopefully you know get one more football team i'm excited about gonzaga joining as far as basketball i think that's all great for the same time it's not the conference it was you know right. 100 plus years, Conference of Champions, Rose Bowl doesn't mean much anymore. I'm, I'm old enough to remember Keith Jackson to know how great it was, so it's sad. How do you view the Coug fans now and the Cougs in general? Is it more so like a brotherly love or is it more of a rivalry now? Well, it's always been a brotherly love between, I mean, we were the two schools that they were trying to kick out of the Pac-10 
way back when, when it was the Pac-10, and now everybody just left instead. So we're the two left standing. So the two schools being land grant schools, so much in common, both always having to play second fiddle to Oregon and Washington, and us cheering for each other when we'd beat, beat our rivals. Mm -hmm. I mean, I have family that are Cougar fans and Cougar alums, so yeah. it's been a uh, Cougar supporter, and I love going there. Yeah. I love going to Pullman. I think it's cool that the two schools bonded together and did everything good and, you know, took the Pac-12 to court and yeah. won that. I think that's great. We then head west to Reeser Stadium, passing through various tailgates. And the Southwest Grandstand at Reeser is new as of the 2023 season. They started construction in December 2021, and this renovation makes it a completely different stadium. Down this entire side of the field, it's called Beaver Street. It's an open concourse and walkway all the way down this side of the field, with various food spots, places to sit, railings to lean up on and put your drink, a contactless tap to pay drink market, and ideal views of the game. Shout out to this guy who had the best sweatshirt I saw at the game. And also a big thank you to the gentleman who bought me a drink. He also wanted me to shout out the Coast Guard and thank you for your service. It's pretty unfortunate that the Pac-12 collabs, a lot of great teams, but coming with the new, new pack, the new teams, uh, a lot of exciting things with Boise and San Diego State. Excitement's high here. I mean, the rivalry is high, but it's a great environment here, so it's gonna be a fun matchup. Okay, the Pac-12 falling apart, it wasn't inevitable. Let's be honest, we're not making as much money as the other schools that moved away, but we're doing a whole lot better now. Yeah. We beat Washington, so what if Oregon's number one? It doesn't matter. We're still better than them. We would beat them no matter yeah. what. John Mateer, 17 touchdowns in that game oh, alone. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> they just all want to lead to the Big Ten, Big 12. Right. But the teams that saved us Cougars and the Oregon State that were here, we're friends. We're good people. But like literally today, after four o'clock, it's four quarters of you football, bro. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Cougars should be awesome. literally in the SEC, so <laughs> yeah. this is the biggest this is our, rivalry this is in Pac-12. This, right this is our true yeah, rivalry. Right now. This is a Pac-12 conference yeah. right now. Washington ain't shit. <laughs> Washington ain't shit. <laughs> Let's go. This evening was senior night for the Beavers, and they came ready to play. We then head up to the 200 level, which is where our seats were, and took in the crisp but beautiful night for some Pac-12 football. I love the teams we got. I think we have really cool fans with the other schools here. And so I think the future is great. I think everybody's got good aspirations for being great. And so really yeah. excited about it. I think it's a rivalry, but also it's like we're both little brothers, I guess. It's like we love them. And I hope like they do great every other game against us, but a lot more hope for them for the rest of their season than we'd have with UW. Do you think uh, Matir should get some like Heisman looks next year going into next year? I mean, I think you should have it this year. Like, yeah. I mean, there's how many people have that many touchdowns? Right. Nobody else. So You're leading the nation in points right now. Yeah. Points so scored. I agree. I agree. Yeah. yeah. There's nobody else who's done what he's done. And we all know how the game went. The Beavers came to play. The Cougs defense was non-existent. And it came down to a wild fourth quarter and a last minute field goal by the Beavers to secure the Pac-12 championship. If you'd like the full breakdown from a couple frustrated Cougs, go check out the full podcast episode of the recap. Otherwise, thank you for watching the vlog. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Go Cougs, go Beavs, and we'll see you in the next one.